Welcome to the IOTA channel and to the third video in a series in which I share my journey of setting up a Domotics home automation system. And in this third episode, we will take a tour of Domotics, set up some devices and do some automations. More in detail, we will have a look at the UI of Domotics, add devices and create some triggers using events. But first, some more information on the hardware we will be connecting. Bitticino My Home is a home automation solution, possibly already dated, but which I invested in some 13 years ago. It is a, a bus system where all actuators have their own address and are linked through a signal wire. The heart of this solution is the gateway, and in my case it is an MH200 which monitors events on the bus network and can inject actions on this bus network. Bitticino My Home uses the Open Webnet protocol to communicate over this bus network. The protocol is well described in this lengthy document from 2011, and it describes in detail how you can construct messages to send over this network and how this protocol allows external applications to interact with my home devices using this protocol. Also, Domotics makes use of this protocol to communicate with Bitticino My Home. And in the wiki, the supported Bitticino gateways are listed. I can confirm that also MH200 gateways work in combination with Domotics. I was unable to add this to the Domotics wiki since registration for the wiki seems to be disabled for some reason. To automate events in my house, I invested in a variety of uh, Xiaomi sensors. I'm, I'm not endorsing these, or, nor am I sponsored by Xiaomi, but I did choose them for three reasons. First of all, these sensors are completely wireless, so I can install them wherever I want. And Xiaomi sensors, they are not expensive at all. Certainly not when you buy them on a platform such as AliExpress. And lastly, they integrate nicely with Domotics. Now, let's have a look at how easy it is to tie these two together, shall we? Let's have a look at Domotics. As I said in previous video, when you install Domotics through DietPy, the default port will be 8124, but when you install Domotics as an application separately on a server, the default port will be 8080. But as indicated in the previous video as well, this can be altered in the config file. Now, on here you have different menu items and the dashboard where your favorite buttons or uh, fa favorite items will be, all your switches, the scenes, which we can configure later, temperature sensors, weather sensors, utility sensors, and a setup button. And under that setup button, the first thing we're going to do is add some hardware. When I click on the hardware button, I get this page where I can, under type, choose a variety of hardware that I can add. So all these systems are supported out of the box for Domotics. And let me show you how easy and how powerful this is. Because when I select the My Home Open Webnet via LAN interface uh, type, and I enter the default IP address of my gateway, I enter a rate limit, limit of zero, disable that one, call this one My Home, I can just click the button Add here down below, and this hardware will be added to my hardware list here. When I now go to Setup Devices, you will see that all the devices have been picked up uh, from my Bitticino My Home um, environment and are listed here, where I see the, the numbers of, of these items in the list as well. So the only thing I need to do is have a look at the configuration of my Bitticino My Home to see which numbers correspond here to which items in my list. If you are planning to use Xiaomi sensors like I do, 
This YouTube video from Xiaomi Fi channel will get you started. I will link it in the video description. Now, from the app on your mobile device, we just need to extract the password and IP address of the gateway. And I do this by going to the gateway device, like this. And then in that gateway device, I click the three dots on the right top corner. I choose the About option. And then I go below the text and tap that space repeatedly. And after this, new menu items appear. Behind this option, I will find the password that I will need later in the setup of Domotics. And part of it I have hidden. Then I go back and I click this option to show the IP address of the Domotics gateway. And I write that down as well. Let's now go back to Domotics to use this information to complete the configuration. Now we will use this information to add the Xiaomi sensors to our list of devices in Domotics. So to add them, I just type in a title or a name and I choose Xiaomi as the type, Xiaomi Gateway. The remote address I give in the IP address that I just saw um, in the app, 9898 is the port, you enter the password that you also wrote down from the app and you click add. And after this, the Xiaomi devices will be added to your hardware and when you go to set up devices, you will see all the different Xiaomi sensors that you already installed and configured in your house. I would like to show you the following. In my study, I'm going to install a wireless Xiaomi switch. I'm going to tape it underneath my desk. And when I click it, automatically a Bidicino light should be turned on. How do we do this? First of all, from the list of devices in my domotics, I need to activate the devices that I'm going to use. Because you see here, with the green buttons, that by default all devices are deactivated. To activate them, you just click the green button and then you give the device a name. For example, this is the study light. Study. I also, of course, need to activate the wireless switch which I installed under my desk. So I do the same and I call it study switch. Now these two devices are activated, I can find them back under the switches tab. And I of course can manually uh, manage my devices, my light bulbs as well. I just have to click the light bulb to turn it on and click again to turn it off. But I want an event to take care of this and I want to control it using my wireless Xiaomi button. So for that, I go to setup more options, events. And under events, I can create a new event by pressing the plus button and I can choose the development language in which I want to create this event. There's a, a lot of options here. Eh? So Blockly, Python, Lua, DZ events. But I'm going for the most easy way to create events and that's Blockly. I have an empty canvas here and on the left hand side, I can choose the puzzle pieces which I want to use to create my event. What I want to do is, if the button is being pressed, the light should be turned on. And for that, I'm going to link some puzzle pieces together, like this. So, if the study switch is being pressed, then study light should should be turned on. Now when the study switch is being pressed with Xiaomi, what happens then is that the string and the, the tick click is being uh, 
it's assigned as a status to the button. So I need to enter click here. How, how do I know that this is click? Well, therefore we have to go to the Domotics Wiki. Because there on the Xiaomi page, it says or it lists all the statuses that all the different Xiaomi devices can have. And for the Xiaomi wireless switch, it can have the status click or double click. So that's how I know that I uh, have to use click here. And this is just an example of, uh, of how easy it is to create events. Now I just have to uh, give it a name, huh? for example, event uh, uh, for, the, for the study, save it, and automatically now Domotics will uh, trigger the study light whenever the switch is being pressed. Some other easy examples which I set up in my Domotics environment at home is for example this one. Here I use the Xiaomi motion sensor which I installed in my toilet and the moment that it detects motion the light in the toilet will turn on for three minutes. So here I'm working with the timer. For the following is I installed a button next to the kitchen table and I wanted to have one button press to turn the light on, one button press to turn the light off, and I wanted to maintain the state of, of the lights, irrespective of whether I turned it on or off via the button or via an other way. And this is how I did it. Other examples of Domotics events can be found online on the Domotics forum, so please don't hesitate to browse around there. Thank you for watching the third episode in this Domotic series. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I look forward to sharing my next video with you. Goodbye!